This paper is very important, as it comes from OpenAI, the company that released GPT-4 and ChatGPT. First, let's talk about the methodology of the paper. The researchers used a new rubric to assess occupations, based on their correspondence with GPT capabilities, incorporating both human expertise and classifications from GPT-4. The findings are quite staggering. Approximately 80% of the US workforce could have at least 10% of their work tasks affected by the introduction of GPTs. That means that a large portion of jobs in the country could potentially be impacted by the increasing capabilities of AI. But that's not all. Around 19% of workers may see at least 50% of their tasks impacted. That's a significant number of people who could be affected by the rise of AI in the workplace. And it's not just low-wage jobs that are at risk. Higher income jobs could potentially face even greater exposure. In fact, I will share two findings from the paper that are totally unexpected. To give you a sense of just how quickly model capabilities are progressing, let's take a look at the difference between GPT-3.5 and GPT-4. GPT-4 is already outperforming the majority of humans at some of the toughest exams in the world. That's pretty incredible. And now, GPT-4 can even understand images. It can see and solve questions requiring the analysis of diagrams, charts, or images without requiring humans to describe the image to it. And it's not just solving these tests. It's topping them. The performance improvements are seen even without the visual capabilities of GPT. But with these incredible advancements come some important questions like how will AI impact the labor market, which jobs are most exposed and which jobs are safe. And this is exactly what the paper attempts to study. The researchers use a rubric to judge how exposed a job is to AI. Jobs with E0 exposure means no exposure, while E1 and E2 means large language models like GPT can greatly reduce the time taken to do a job. The beta exposure tasks are considered twice as exposed as tasks with no exposure. So, what were the findings? The occupations with the highest exposure include mathematicians, tax preparers, writers, web designers, accountants, journalists, and legal secretaries. Interestingly, the study found that higher paying jobs are more affected by AI changes than lower paying jobs. Jobs that rely heavily on science and critical thinking are less at risk. In contrast, programming and writing jobs are particularly impacted by the adoption of large language models. The study also observed that occupations with high barriers to entry are more likely to be affected by large language models than those with low barriers to entry. But what about jobs with no exposure to large language models? Well, the study found that these mainly include manual occupations such as stonemasons or cooks, which can usually be learned after a shorter period of schooling and do not require many years of study upfront. However, the study notes that even these occupations are likely to be indirectly impacted by the adoption of large language models. As office jobs become obsolete, there may be increased competition for manual labor, leading to increased performance pressure in those segments. So what are the policy implications of all this? The authors of the paper say that large-scale preparedness is needed for the potential economic changes these models will bring. Previous studies have linked LLMs to increasing economic disparity and labor disruption. It's important to be proactive and think about ways to mitigate these potential negative impacts. Towards the end of the paper, the authors make an interesting comparison saying GPTs are GPTs. They mean that GPTs are like general purpose technologies such as electricity, fire, or mobility. They have a major impact on the entire economy. The researchers hypothesize that the language models like GPT have characteristics of these general purpose technologies. Interestingly, the paper provides two versions of the conclusion, one written by GPT-4 and one augmented by the human authors. Perhaps this is a precursor to the future of work where AI models and humans will increasingly co-create. This brings us to the end of our video. Thank you for watching, consider subscribing for more such informative content, and check the video description for sources and credits.